Hey guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. And if you've ever wondered exactly how hackers hack or what are the steps or processes behind a successful cyber attack, I am going to answer that question because today we're talking about the hacking methodology. How exactly do hackers hack? What are the steps they take behind the scenes to launch a successful cyber attack? Now, before I get into the topic, do hack that like button because that would really help me. I'm trying to go to the channel. That will help the algorithm a lot. So please hack that like button right now. And thank you so much for your support. Let's get into the topic, the hacking methodology. Now, the first thing I want to clarify is that there is no playbook or an essential guide on how to hack. It's not that there are these laws of hacking that hackers dutifully follow. No. The steps they take will vary slightly depending on the attack, the kind of attack they're trying to perform, who the target is, and also how skillful the hackers are. So there is no official playbook or guide. However, there is a general standard or a general methodology which we will be talking about. So the very first step six steps by the way to be an optional but the very first step is what we call reconnaissance or footprinting this is typically where the hackers will try to gather as much information as they can about their intended targets i'm pretty sure you've seen this in movies before where you have like the you know the bank robbers they're trying to rob a bank and before they perform their attack they all go there like a few days before Try to see how many guards are in the bank, the kind of safe the bank has, the security protocols, things like that. So basically, in hacking, we also have the step called reconnaissance, where you're gathering as much information as you can about the intended target. Now, before I talk about the two types of reconnaissance, I do have these quotes from uh, Sun Tzu. If you know your enemy and yourself, you need not fear the result of 100 battles, you know, blah, 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 blah. The whole point here being that when you know as a hacker, when you know your target very, very well, the chances of you successfully hacking them or performing a successful attack will be increased greatly. Now, going back to reconnaissance, there are basically two types, the passive reconnaissance and the active reconnaissance. Now, the passive reconnaissance, what's interesting about this particular step is that it is the only step in the hacking methodology that is legal. It's the only step that is not illegal, all right? So what are the steps involved in here? Things like email addresses, or the kind of data gathered here would be things like email addresses, phone numbers, social media accounts, physical location. And you might be wondering why exactly will the hacker want to know the physical location of the target? Well, maybe they want to perform a USB uh, drop attack where they will infect USB drives and then they will go to like the parking lot of a company dropped USB drives around there like in strategic locations, hoping that some dumb employee would pick up the USB drive, take it back to their office and plug it into their computer. So that's why sometimes uh, gathering the physical location or knowing the physical location of the target uh, might be important. But that's basically passive reconnaissance. There is nothing illegal about this. It's fine for you to know the email address of the CEO of, uh, I don't know, uh, Pfizer or whatever. It's, there's nothing illegal about that, right? Or even gathering phone numbers or social media accounts. However, we do have active reconnaissance. This is where you begin to search for vulnerabilities uh, within the system, right? And the kind of data you would look for would be things like IP addresses. So you can perform things like a, a DDoS attack, DNS servers, you can perform DNS poisoning, open ports, what ports are open on the computer or on the network that might give us the ability to gain entrance. Usernames and passwords, obviously, and then company software. The thing is, you've got all these databases on the internet where you will have records of all known bugs for different kinds of products from Adobe to Apple to Microsoft, you name it. So if a hacker knows the kind of software the company is using, maybe for their accounting or inventory or whatever, they might just say, hey, okay, let's go search the database and find out if this particular product has any known vulnerabilities and then they might be able to try to exploit that vulnerability, which leads us to the next step, which is the exploitation. Taking advantage of a vulnerability, and you have things like sending out a phishing email, you have social engineering, on patch software, weak passwords, malware injection. These are the kinds of steps that can be taken in the exploitation phase. You've identified the weaknesses, the vulnerabilities within the system, 
Now it is time for us to take advantage of those weaknesses by exploiting them. Step number three would be privilege escalation, increasing the control over the exploited target. And three major steps here would be things like creating new accounts, network hijack. So not only have you now gained access to a computer, you are now gaining control over the entire network. And then of course, the most important perhaps admin account access. When you have admin privileges, you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. So that's the privilege escalation. That's the third step. Step number four is establishing persistence, ensuring continuous access even after the breach has been discovered by the victim. This is one of the optional phases or optional steps because sometimes the hackers might just be performing a one-off hack. They've gained access, they just want to steal data and that's it. They don't care about maintaining persistence. But the idea behind persistence is that if the hacker in the future wants to be able to come back and gain access to the network or the computer, establishing persistence is very, very important. So two main steps in here, adding backdoors, remote access control. So again, this is one of the optional steps. It all depends on the kind of uh, uh, cyber attack that's being performed. So this leads us to step number five, which is the actual attack phase. Data extraction, data corruption, malware injection, this is the actual hack itself. But notice that the attack phase typically comes after uh, privileges have been escalated and in certain situations where persistence has been established. It's not that, okay, you exploit a weakness and then you immediately begin attacking. No. You want to make sure you gain as much control as you can. In fact, the privilege escalation, think of it as like a boggler boggles into a house, right? At night, it's an empty house. They boggled, they were able to enter the living room first. They're not gonna stop at the living room, will they? They'll go upstairs, look at all the bedrooms, go to the kitchen if possible, just like, they'll go basically everywhere. That's kind of like the whole point behind privilege escalation. You wanna gather as much control as you can over the exploited targets. So after you've established persistence, you've attacked next, and the final step typically would be cover up. This is also optional. Sometimes the hackers don't want the target to know that they've been hacked. Sometimes they do want the target or the victim to know that they've been hacked, like in your typical ransomware attack. Obviously, the hackers want the targets or the victims to know that they've been hacked so that they can demand a ransom. But in many other situations, the hacker just wants to perform a very silent attack and just whew, disappear. That's basically avoiding detection. So doing things like using IC ICMP tunnels, which I'm thinking of making a video about ICMP, ICMP tunnels, are uh, clearing event logs, like servers, for example, servers record basically every activity. If you have admin privileges, you can go in there and clear all the event logs and pretend like nothing ever happened. Erasing the command history, which is very, very similar to clearing event logs. Which gives me, uh, which brings me to this other quote that the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he did not exist by Charles uh, Baudelaire. I don't know how to pronounce that name. And I honestly don't even know why I thought of this quote, but this is a quote I've heard so many times before. And I think there was also a reference to this quote in a particular movie I watched recently about hacking. I don't quite remember. But the whole point here being that, of course, one of the best hacks is when you successfully attack a system or a network or a company and they don't even know that they've been hacked because you were able to cover up your tracks. So that's basically the six steps behind the hacking methodology. The first one being reconnaissance, gather as much information as you can about the target, and then exploitation. This is where the hackers will exploit the weaknesses that were uncovered in reconnaissance. You have privilege escalation. You've gained entrance, you've gained access, now you want to gain as much control as you can. Establishing persistence so that if the attack has been detected and the company's uh, network engineers or security engineers try to kick you out, you're able to maintain persistence. You're like, you become very, very stubborn. You're not going anywhere, basically, right? And then you've got the actual attack phase where the attack is performed and then cover up. But remember that establishing persistence and cover up typically will depend on the kind of uh, attack. It's optional, it's not always uh, the case. So that's it for today's video covering the hacking methodology. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. 
share the video with anyone who may, you may feel might benefit. And if you're new here or you've been here before and you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. My name is Alex. It's been a pleasure. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.